I say park, pass it. Park. Pass it. Park. Park. We are the building. All right. We're back. We didn't go anywhere. Did we go? To, we didn't go anywhere. Uh, we got up and sat back down. But you can tell I'm wearing the same clothes. And first off, before we even get into it, shout out to my boy Ivy. You know what I'm saying? From Florida. I got the who? Oh. What do you got on there? I don't even know what Outcast that. Society. Oh, okay. Oh, no, because the last time I had a hat here of Ivan's Dead Raps, so I was like, oh, wait, where's the hat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, shout uh, out. We're, shout inside, out. Of, we're inside of Studio 28, uh, Broadcast Dog and Pony Show TV. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us. Uh, as you can see, we're in the studio. And. The next thing you see will be something different, and the next thing you see will be something different. We do everything in this creative area, from rapping with you and a uh, uh, Keeve. Yeah, uh, we did the second cup like live. Second cup live. Yeah, 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 go yeah. check, go check that out on the Instagram. Yeah, uh, so I mean, yeah, promote the. There's a creative space, which is yeah, like for everything: podcasts, yeah. photography, music videos, uh, meetings, whatever. Yeah. We're on Peer Space, all that. So. No, and it leads right into and peer, you guys are on Peer Space, right? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a that's because going into booking shows and stuff like that. I've used uh, I used Peer Space back in the day. Um, for like album release parties, phenomenal. Well, I feel like it's not really music. No, venues. no, it's just like uh, location venues that you do part. You, can do you do creative. Yeah, you do yeah, like yeah, creative yeah, things, yeah. Um, but that's perfect. The creative space to start with it because this kind of leads us into what we're going to talk about right now is. Uh, um, I just heard something when I was uh, driving down uh, the other day um, on a podcast, and they were talking. Shout out to Curtis King. I don't know if you guys are familiar who he Curtis is, King, but uh, he's you know an independent artist who does a lot of DIY stuff. Really, like oh, okay. you know, kind of does his own shit and. Um, and he was like the concept of DIY, but it evolves, and I think I can relate a lot, it evolves into DIY. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, or I think what he meant by that, but I'll take it my own way, is just that like, you know, you do a lot of things solo because you have to. Like we, I think yeah, yeah. I was, I would call myself a DIY artist for a lot of my career. I mean, I went to studios and stuff early on, but then it really evolved into like, all right, well, how do I do this shit myself? Make my own artwork, make my, you know, mix my song, record myself, uh, uh, find a way to throw our own events, whatever. It's a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. DIY, doing your own shit, print your own CDs, print your own flyers, go put that. them up. Yeah, you already that. know. And then as it evolves, which we kind of talked about last episode, your schedule starts to fill up. We start to get busier. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does have to be a little bit more like you have to build the team out a little bit if you're gonna function it and be, uh, you know, not burnt out. Like I, you yeah, have no. to have people help, right? I mean, yeah, because like you said, schedule and then your your own life at home. You gotta think about that, your personal time. But it's just like the team. Like who's gonna who's gonna help you work the door? Who's gonna help you DJ? Who's gonna yeah. um, Help you promote it, market it. Cause you only could do so much by yourself, and then a lot of times it like depends what kind of venue you're booking. Because the venue might be like, well, we don't have a door guy or security, or you know, so. Well, it's and a lot some of venues, it's some venues factors. will do some promotion themselves, and some venues just don't. yeah, they just be like, yeah. see you when you see you when you get here. Yeah, but the team thing, the team effort is important. Uh, because even like yourself, I tell people like, I had a challenge at one time. I'll tell you, uh, where it was just like, man, am I an artist or I'm like. Yeah, an event curator, and yeah. I'm doing. I was doing so many events, like, dude, I felt like wasn't. I felt like I wasn't really right. I felt like my music wasn't hitting how I wanted it to hit at the time, and I was like, I would, I'd, I would record them and be like, nah, nah, yeah, nah. like, and it got to that point. So I had to like find the the team, and that's why I had to find like, all right, this I'm stepping away today or tomorrow, and really tell myself that because I know it's in good hands, or I'm or. I'm prepared because I've already put the work in and not scrambling. That's why I feel a lot of DIY yeah. artists do. They scramble because they want to perform so much and do this. Yeah. No, no, I, I really can relate to all of that. I think the, um, honestly, one of the reasons I stopped doing the podcast was, uh, like my original podcast that I had was because, um, well, there's two reasons, but one, because I didn't feel like I was having enough time for music. And I felt like, um, like at the point in my career, I was like, you, I, how could I justify, um, uh, compromising some time on the crap like the, the music was always the number one in the whole yeah. thing I, I can't justify in my head compromising the time i need to get better at that like i'm not good enough yet to be able to be like ah oh, yeah i could just do that here and then do this mm-hmm. and also to go with that it was like me asking myself like all right um a lot of people are recognizing me f- and saying like oh i saw your interview or i saw your podcast thing or whatever so like i was getting seen in a certain regards not a lot of people but like some people would be like oh you're you host a podcast you host events and I wasn't feeling seen as an artist. And I know that's an internal battle. Yeah, yeah. And we've had this conversation plenty of yeah. times. But I'd be lying if I said that wasn't part of it. I like being honest about it because I think people go through that. It's like, I think you have to embrace it, though. You have to embrace it. Yeah, there's both sides to it. Yeah, but you can only... And now I'm at the point where I can embrace all that because I've done the work and I'm confident enough in my own art. And, and also just getting some recognition for your art, like, that does help. Like, I'd be lying if I said it's all about your own work internally. Yeah. Like, that matters, but, like, honestly, having people tell me, like, yo, the album is really uh, good, it's impactful, it matters, 
that has helped shift my perspective a little bit too. So or even even after your performances, after performances, they come up to you yeah. and people you because you could you. We've we've been around so many people. You could feel when something's like genuinely real, like a genuine like dude, yeah, like from the handshake to whatever the, the pitch. You could tell, and it feels it's like a drug. Like it feels so good, but it took us time to get here to get up to that. So much time, and I I do think now looking back, like all those other steps, like doing the podcast, doing the shows, they all helped me get to this point. Yeah, so yeah. like for sure. But then I had to take a step back from all that, just focus on myself as an artist for a couple of years, and it really uh really helped a lot and. Um, yeah, and to, I mean, to your point about getting off stage, like that's um, that's the realization that I've come to. It's probably you know getting older and old man wisdom or whatever. But like, uh, like the song I just dropped, I just dropped a single with Keeve. It's called Saving Grace, and like the whole premise of the song when I wrote the song was literally like, you know, I seen the impact eye to eye in my heart that stays. That's all I that like I know at the end of the day. It, it, literally, the chorus is, I, you know, I'll be okay. I know it ended day my saving grace. I seen the impact eye to eye, and in my heart it stays. Because to me, it's like, look, no matter what happens, no matter how big stuff gets, how, however, like, I hope it does. But even if it doesn't, I can go to sleep at the end of the night being like, I know that my art has impacted people. I know that what we've yeah, done has, yeah. has helped people because of those in-person conversations you have at shows and shit. Like, and it goes, and that's where the, you know, the DI, we, where we all work together. And like, we all, if you have a team, the whole team can work the room yeah. or, or work an event. Be like, you two go this way, you two go this way. And you don't have to baby anybody. You don't have to be on top of like, oh, see, like, no, no, you believe in the team that you got, but look at us, we, the way, the way we, when we go on tour, we, we work a room, you yeah. know, we, by, by the time, and we, by, by the, by the time we leave, we got the music venues contacts, we got a list of artists that we met, we got people that potentially already bought merch, so it's like a yeah. checkbox, checkbox, so I would say be on top of your team if you're going to transition from DIY to DIY. And I would say to be, like, I just, whatever, to be honest about it too is like, um, that's not necessarily an easy transition because the mindset to have the, like the DIY mindset that I've had and I've had to do all these things myself, then you get really comfortable in that. You're used to how you work. You're used yeah, to how yeah. you like things being, how th you like things end up like looking and stuff like that. Um, so now the balance to like allowing other people to work with you and then having like giving them the freedom to do what they do, trusting them, try like it does take time to like for me. I just want to be honest about it. Like it's not always easy. No. I, like I, I like I'll have somebody do an artwork for a song or whatever, and it's not how I envisioned it. But like that's the trust. Like that's the being like, look, if I'm gonna work with people, if I'm gonna um, now that doesn't mean I can't give my two cents or whatever, but. But like you gotta allow other people the freedom as well, and then that's how you really build a team that trusts each other and that like, I want. And my they see and yeah. they see the bigger vision at hand, not just like oh tomorrow. Like no, we're focused on what can happen like by the end of the year, next year, in the future. But in order to get to the, in order to get there, what are we doing now to make it happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all, you know, we want everybody to thrive in that group, and that's kind of the thing is like when you're an artist, like no matter what, um, it could come off as like you're the you're the center of it all because well that's. You know, that's how it goes. Like, the, the bright lights shine on the artists on stage or whatever. But, like, there's so many other things that are going on behind the scenes that need yeah, to happen. some of the biggest shows, you know, like, Hill Tony wouldn't happen without, you know, his whole... I'm pretty sure that production team is, like, 30 people at least yeah, to course. make that show happen. Yeah. So, you got so many factors in it, and they all trust each other. And it, from, from security to the person behind the camera to the people in front, technicians, the band, like, that's got to be a lot of trust to run... Something big, yeah, especially and, with the music too. And like somebody like uh, who I bring up all the time, but I just talked about was La Russell. But like when you see, like seeing it firsthand when I'm there at the uh, Q and A, like they have I you already know this, but like he shoots so much content and so much, uh, so much new stuff every single day that can feel overwhelming as an independent artist. But then you do realize like oh you know they have a big team, like they have a team, like they've worked to the point where they can afford this or whatever. But yeah. Like, yeah. Everywhere he goes, he has a cameraman. Like, everywhere he goes, he has a cameraman. Or he has his manager with him. Or he has, like, a you know a group of people that are driving him around. So when you're driving... I think about this all the time because we have to drive... I have to drive all the time to places far away. It's like, if I had a driver, not saying that I... Whatever, like, oh, I need a driver. But if I did, <laughs> so the drivers, amount of work... need a driver. The amount of work you can get done oh, on your yeah, phone yeah, or on your laptop in those three hour in that three-hour drive is a lot. And it's, like, and it's also the investment you're willing to make. Because uh, think about DIY shows. Right? DIY shows... I've done DIY shows where like, yeah, you can have it for free or do this or like, it's very just like nonchalant. But when you get to DIY, when you're working with a team and all that, like everyone's got to, you know, you want to break off everyone, whatever. You can't worry about yourself. Being like, oh, we're going to drown ourselves in, pocket, in our pockets. Like, no, 
we all have to spread this evenly and be like, all right, if he gets this much and this much, well, that's what it's cool. That's what the show is. But everyone has to realize that, like, yeah, the bread's going to come and we're going to make we're gonna make lots now, make a little here. But it depends how we do it to the point you get so consistent where it's like boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, yeah. boom, boom. But everybody got to realize on the team, like, that's how it's going to go. So if you're going to get fed up with this or not realize, like, there's going to be fast days, there's going to be slow days. So No, this all it's, – it's all true and it all makes sense and it's uh, – a. Um, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's where we're at. Like, I mean, I don't know if you feel this. I feel the same, or I feel this way. Is like the DIY has now has to become DIY. Like, just because of how things are moving and how we're doing all yeah. right, it has to be like we trust each other. We have a team full of people. And we already do, um, you know, and then you have your own people. I have some of my own people, too, that we just individually, like, have to go to yeah. and trust and do stuff. And if you're going to keep, it's like, um, it's like any business scaling up. You don't scale up and, and get less employees. Like, that's not how that works. Like, you yeah, have no, to you get, get more. more. And, like, you might have to take bigger risks when it comes to advertising budget or whatever it may be. Like, you might have to take bigger risks, um, and which I'm actually going through right now, trying to figure out, like, where do you put some of the yeah, budget? Yeah, where's the risk? Where's yeah. the risk that you want to – it's not a gamble. It's a risk. It's a, it's, it can be calculated, but there's a lot of factors that come into yeah. it. Yeah, no, for sure. And this leads us into um, we're going to do – we're going to answer another fan question – um, if you are a fan, you've been checking out the show, please make sure that you uh, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. But also, uh, you can go on Spotify. You can answer. We have a QA and a thing at the bottom. You can give us a question. You can just DM either of us, and uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer it as the show goes on. Um, so this one comes from an artist that we've both worked with. Uh, he's actually on my new album. Uh, okay. So shout out to my boy, Usman. You shout know what Usman. it is. Uh, this, is a, this is a great question that I think uh, we probably have some thoughts on. Um, yeah. So what do you do with a if you have a dope music video but not a huge fan base but you really like the video you have, um, you know like where do you where would you run ads? Uh, do you pay media to promote it or who or like what what would you do with that is essentially the uh, the like question. He already has it. the music video. Yeah, I think that what I'm gathering uh, from that or at least the way I'm gonna take it is they, he already has a music video he really well, likes. Now what do you do? So with I it? would say, chop that up. You know, thirty seconds depending how long it is. You could do one sixty second clip, thirty second one. Now every day, everything's shot in the real nowadays. So get get you a clip of your video, uh, turn it into lyrics, vid- turn it into a lyric video, because that's the thing. Because think about back then when music videos were released, not like on YouTube and stuff. Like it was just like it was just a video on YouTube. Like, yeah, that's what you had to watch. And now, you know, you shoot a music video, you shoot. It's got to be real size. It's got to be the music video. It's got to be. You want it to be on TikTok. You want it to be on Instagram. You want it to be on Facebook. Like. Turn your music video into like ten different things. Yeah, not just the one anymore. And 100%. that's and that's up to you. Like wh- whoever you're working with, like are they gonna do that for you, or are you gonna learn that skill? You gonna cap cut that thing? Yeah, sponsor. I would <laughs> suggest you learn that skill yourself if yeah. you do, because I just think that's Cause, gonna. Because like, like you just said, La Russell, like yeah, he's got a team now, so now you can get to the point. Yeah, learn it, and then if you find somebody that's willing to do it and you could pay that price, then okay, cool. But are you better be consistent with it. Hundred percent. You know, not not waste that content. I think it's a. I think this is a tricky. I'm glad he asked that question. I'm glad Usman asked this question because I think it's a tricky thing, right? And like, he, you know, it comes from an era. So do we, where music videos were really valued. And I still yeah. like music videos when I watch. Yeah. You know, when I watch a good music video. But the truth is, I haven't. I used to prioritize spending a budget on music videos. I've spent thousands of dollars on music videos early in my career. Um, because that was a, something that was really important to me. Like, I really wanted to do that. And then, like, slowly that kind of faded. And now, I, the last music video I shot was 2 p.m. in Milwaukee. And I, think, I think it went from music videos to music vid. Because, like, it's just a sh- now it's just a short piece of content you could do. And, like, a music video could be, uh, it could be, like, just you in a room and you're doing your thing. And now that's considered, like, a music video. It could be artful in its own way. Like like you said back then, I felt it was like, it was way more of a production. No, it was it was. And it the was. big the big people, yeah, they still do the production stuff. But back then, everything was. Had well, to be the, you could justify you could justify the budget more. Um, yeah. Because with album sales and stuff, you could kind of justify it more. Now it's a little harder for them to even justify those budgets because they're like, well, if you just go stream, the money doesn't come back nearly as much. I mean, yeah, you get the YouTube yeah. revenue or whatever. Um, but I think to this particular question, so it, it the video is already done. So we're gonna we're gonna get past that part about like you know whether or not you value that. I'll get to that after what I think the real approach should be, but. Um, if you have a music video done that you like, uh, I, I agree with you completely. It's like you have to figure out a way to chop it up. Uh, make sure you make it the uh, you know the real size the right way, and just cut up different portions of it until you find whatever you like. Um, now I will say, in my experience, the, like when you cut up a music video and do it like that, they don't usually do as well as shooting something one? specific for a reel, or not even oh, that. Oh, okay, I get you. Like get shooting you. specifically for a reel. Um, usually does better. Like when, like when, as on the acting side, when I do, um, when I did that tequila commercial recently, 
we shot so many takes because some of them were wide and some of them were for social media ads. So mm -hmm. they shot it a whole different way. Because um, it does, like, I, I don't know if the algorithms prioritize it, but it definitely, they seem to do better that way. Um, so knowing that in your head, I would still say the, be the way to get the most eyeballs on the music video that you have already shot would be to break it up to 10 clips, sporadically post those. You can spread it out over two weeks, three weeks. Then you have three weeks worth of, work of, worth of promotion for that song, for yeah, that yeah. album. Even, maybe even spread it out even longer if you want. Um, well, I'll say go, if you're going to, music video, learn, or hire somebody to search engine optimize. You can use Fiverr, whatever. Uh, Google ads. Do Google ads, YouTube yeah. ads, because now you can be... You need to can be. You can either be the video in that corner that says sponsored, or be a video that pops up before. You ever seen a music video pop up before a video you're gonna watch? Yeah, like that's another way you could do it. I like the other way, but but now if you go into the analytics of it, you can target cities. You can yeah. you can put a list of which however many music videos I want my video to be associated with. So if like if our thing's underground hip hop, okay, I'm gonna pick this underground artist. So maybe when someone's watching his video, my video will pop up next because I put it in there. Is it tedious? Oh my god, it's tedious. Yeah. It's, you can learn it, but you can hire somebody to do it, and that will be specifically to YouTube. So now that if you want to get your music video up on YouTube all the way, like you're gonna have to pump money to that, but be smart with how you do it. No, I yeah I agree. So like yeah, you would run YouTube or go, you you know Google Ads to your YouTube just um, for the music video. Now just, the clips is different. No, no, the clips is totally different. Yeah, no. So if we're talking specifically for that, maybe put a little budget over there, see how it's going. I think one of the questions would be, um, and this is something that I'm ongoingly thinking about, ongoingly. Uh, New word. It, yeah, right. Um, is are you are you content IDing the song then? Because if you content ID the song, then you will get paid off those plays. Mm -hmm. um, you won't get paid off the YouTube side of it. Um, but if your YouTube channel is not even monetizing at the time, I don't think that's really that big a deal. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out all those things too because if you're like, because it's like anything, it's like, where's the return on investment, right? So, yeah. so is it like I'm trying to monetize my YouTube and build my YouTube up? And build that so you get to a point where you're able to monetize and you're able to do all those things. And that can help build your subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likes and all that kind or of are you just focused on visibility for the record? Because yeah. I think um, that that is probably in an early on stage where, like he said, like you don't have a huge fan base yet. Um, I think that's the most important thing. That's just my personal opinion. I think visibility for whatever your record is and just your name in general. Because most of the time, people are going to have to see you seven, eight times before they go yeah, look you got to be up. in their minds. So, like, yeah, maybe you run some YouTube ads well, on that. If you're saying that... Uh, I forgot who it was. It might have been Gary or something. He's like, um, he's like, target a small amount of a, a handful of like cities or towns, or whatever. So, for example, our Spotify analytics, we can go and see what's my top four or five towns. So, let's say he dropped the video. You don't have the biggest fan base, but you got some or something. Maybe you see those top four or five cities, and then that's and then you sh and then for like Instagram, or something you super target them like there. You could do it. You could add them to the list for YouTube, for TikTok. So now, like you just said, people got to see you again and again. So. Yeah. Hey, he just popped up on my YouTube earlier. No, you're right. Now he he popped up on my Instagram. Instagram. You know, that, that is, that's great. And you're right. And so, like, specifically uh, as things you could implement, uh, Usman, I would say um, if you decide to run some YouTube ads, that's cool, but maybe tailor them up so you can kind of match them in the locations where your Instagram ads. Now, I'll just speak to the Instagram um, portion of this. I would say break it up into 10 or, you know, 15 clips, however many you, you feel comfortable with. They could be 15 seconds. They could be 30 seconds, whatever. Um, then post those over time. See which one does the best just naturally. Just which one does the best naturally. This is usually what I do. See, see what does the best naturally. Then put a little money behind, whether you want to just do the boost ads on there, if you want to go to the Facebook business ads. I mean, you know, don't just throw your money away, but try to tailor that up so you know where that they're going. And then whichever one, if it does really well after you've run the ads on it and whatever, make sure you pin that to your profile. And then when people come to your page, like that's something that's going to come up right away. And... I, that, those are little things, but I just think yeah. over time, like that, that is what I would do. There's no right answer to it. Um, and then, and then going forward, just because I haven't prioritized music videos as much, I would take if you say you had a budget, say you spent two hundred dollars on that, take that two hundred dollars, either keep it and use it in ad money, and then go gorilla shoot yourself, because that's what I do. Um, I just went to Notre Dame's campus yesterday and shot like ten random music videos for random verses on my projects. There we go. Like literally, like what I like. I have an album with 16 songs. That is 
40 verses, I could that's 40 pieces of different content I could do right there. That's kind of the approach that I take. You can do yourself with your iPhone, with your Samsung. Uh, it's all I do. Your gimbal, you know, like. You'll see me with my iPhone and my laptop because I need something to play the song because I can't play the song while I'm recording it, right? So like, I'll have my laptop or something else that plays a song, and then yeah. I have my phone, and you just you might just, to Bluetooth. You might just see me somewhere recording it. Now this is where you want to get better at this editing. Be the David challenge if you can find David. If you find me recording a reel recording. somewhere, this is where you want to get better at the editing stuff, and, and you kind of just hone it after you you know after time you see what works better, but. uh that's that's the approach I would take, but with it already being done, I'd say break it up in a you know a bunch of content, and also don't just post it on IG, post it on TikTok, post it on YouTube Shorts, um, even Facebook Reels or whatever. Uh, just do it all because all of the visibility matters. Yeah. All of it matters. Yeah, um, hope that helped, man. Hope that helped, Usman. Let me see if you, was there anything else in there. No, you said you know where to run ads, pay media. I I would avoid personally paying media to just like post your video. I, I don't I don't see a huge. Got to truly be worth it. That their fan base has, and yeah. I think you got to take it goes back to get your ass out there and go go do shows, get outside the city, perform that song, and then you could you know then yeah. you could push it to people. Hey, check out my latest, you know all that. No, I agree. And, I, I, and, and oh, another, another gem. Every, every time you get a new follower or something, and then you got them through music, send them like, oh hey, thanks for the follow. You know, check out my latest reel, whatever. So now you got a yeah. person who's clearly a fan now that they're following you do that so i think that'd be a good one yeah no i think that to sum it up you know figure out a way to uh, make as many pieces of content you can get the visibility up and i i would say avoid paying for media to just post it like avoid blog like you get all these dms about blogs that are like hey i'll repost your video for x amount of money i don't truthfully see a huge value to that Um, the blog the blog is not the same as what it used to be and if their fan base doesn't line up with your fan base it doesn't really matter anyways it's just going into like the world whatever so that's not what the approach I would take, but um, hopefully that's enough to help, man. I appreciate you asking. You know, you're always uh, always somebody we love to have on shows and love to work with. So your voice, uh, your verse on if for anybody who hasn't heard Usman's music, go check out our song "Peace of Mind," my song "Peace of Mind" with him on it because his verse is insane, and then he has a bunch of amazing music himself. So make sure Shout you're checking Usman, that all out. Yeah, and make sure if you got questions to ask us, let us know on Spotify, let us know on YouTube. You can comment below. Instagram, make sure you subscribe. You Share the show. We're trying to grow. It's a new thing, um, and we're trying to provide some value for we're every uh, local third artists. Friday of the month. Bremen Cafe. Third Friday of the month. Bremen Cafe. The Passion Park Experience. If you're trying to perform at that, hit us up. Um, trying to perform at Eyes on a Prize. Hit yep. us up. It's a uh, first weekend at Uptowner. I'm I said. Bar. I said on our last uh, series of episodes, one of those. I said that the best way to book me to book to get booked by me, honestly, is meet me in person at a show. And I cannot tell you how many, I just saw, I went to a show, whatever, last week, booked like two people that just came up to me. They're like, yo, I haven't been on a show. Like, that is by far the best way. So there what I'm go. trying to say is come out to our shows, even if you're not on the lineup, and we'll probably get you on the lineup in the future. That's how we do things. Uh, so yeah, Passion anything. Park. Yeah, yeah, Passion come on. Uh, anything you want to add? How you feel? You feel good? No, I'm good, man. Everybody be cool out there. Be safe. It's hot. Man, it's hot out here. It's the summertime. Hot as balls, uh, man. But man, keep grinding on your music and just expand your mind, expand your goals and don't don't put yourself in a box. Like get out there, go travel. It's nice out right now. Get in the car with your friends. Yeah. Go, go hit open mic in a different city. Do your thing. No, we appreciate it. Everybody, we want everybody to grow, and that's what we're here for. Um, thank you to everybody who is you know going back to the DIY DIY thing. Um, thank you to everybody who has helped and everybody who's made it yeah. happen. Um, you know, production on the podcast over here. Shout out Shout Scotty out to back Rocks. there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all this stuff matters. So thank you guys. We appreciate you, and uh, next we'll be time. back. You already know. <laughs> I'm from a city where shit talk is a art It's only friendly, don't you take it to the heart To the heart, got these battle scars Battle scars from years of going hard Going hard like Luca in the clutch Clutch like them bills paid every month Every month, I'm on some new shit It's Mr. Never Comfortable unless we do shit